morning everybody welcome to mass my usual thing at the beginning we have to be very careful now for data protection uh, we've had instructions from the diocese so i shall administer communion from over there so that nobody can be seen and as you come back across the front if you would keep your face towards the altar uh, rather than the, the cameras then we should be we should be fine but anybody whose face appears on any of these live streaming things now, we have to get your consent for your face to appear. So please don't let's bother with that. Let's just keep your faces away. Thank you. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our Mass this Sunday morning, 18th Sunday in ordinary time. We're offering this Mass today for the repose of the soul of Gordon Elking. But first, as we come into God's presence, we are conscious of our many faults and failings. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, 
we call to mind our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their Creator and Guide, you may restore what you have created, and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 The reading for the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, the preacher says. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. For so it is that the man who has laboured wisely, skilfully and successfully must leave what he has, is his own to someone who has not told for it at all. This too is vanity and great injustice. For what does he gain for all the toil and the strain that he has undergone under the sun? What of all his laborious days, his, caress of office, his cares of office, his restless nights? This too is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. You turn them back into dust and say, Go back, sons of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. You sweep men away like a dream, like grass which springs up in the morning. In the morning it springs up and flowers, by evening it withers and fades. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Make us know the shortness of our life, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Lord, relent. Is your anger forever? Show pity to your servants. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice in your days. Let, our, let the favour of the Lord be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. That is why you must kill everything in you that belongs only to the earthly life, fornication, impurity, guilty passion, evil desires and especially greed, which is the same thing as worshipping a false god, and never tell each other lies. You have stripped off your old behaviour with your old self, and you have put on a new self, which will progress towards true knowledge. The more it is renewed in the image of its creator, and in the image that there is no room for distinction between Greek and Jew, 
between the circumcised, the uncircumcised, or between barbarian and Scythian, slave and free man. There is only Christ. He is everything, and he is in everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Yes. A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. My friend, he replied, who appointed me your judge or the arbitrator of your claims? Then he said to them, Watch and be on your guard against avarice of any kind, for a man's life is not made secure by what he owns even when he has more than he needs. Then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man who, having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, what am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, my soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. Take things easy, eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, Fool, this very night the demand will be made for your soul, and this hoard of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when a man stores up treasure for himself in place of making himself rich in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I wonder, looking around, a few of us may have known the time when it was actually legal to use a mobile phone in a car. Um, it's, you know, it's 20 years since the law was changed. It just doesn't seem that long. But 20 years since the law was brought in because of the high proportion of accidents which using a mobile in a car seemed to cause. And most of us probably don't remember it happening. But in the weeks leading up to the introduction of the law, there was an advertisement produced for use on the radio. Two voices spoke at once, one on top of the other. And to the listener, what the voices said was completely unintelligible. And then the message was repeated again, and perhaps the average listener could pick out a word or two here or there, but not make any sense of what was being said. But then finally the two voices were played again, this time one after the other. And of course, people understood it. The first voice said, it's illegal to use a handheld phone while driving. And the second voice said, it's hard to concentrate on two things at the same time. Only by separating the two, by attention to each voice on its own, could the message be heard and understood. And we've seen it recently too, haven't we, in these debates with the politicians vying to be our Prime Minister. They both talk at the same time, and you can't hear a word that either of them is saying. But let, with the courtesy to let each speak, then you can at least get what they're trying to say. And the farmer in today's gospel story has got a similar problem. He's trying to hold together two voices at the same time, but unfortunately the two of them can't sit together. The first is the voice of God, but this is drowned out because the man thinks he's a believer. He prays to God, or so he imagines, and he probably sees all his good fortune as a sign of God's favour to him. But he isn't really listening. The other voice is the one that he actually hears, and it speaks of selfishness and materialism. This voice makes him deaf to the voice of God. It tells him that life is about security, 
about acquiring the money and the possessions which will make his physical life comfortable. In this, the farmer is suffering from what in that first reading is called vanity. Vanity, all is vanity. The original word actually means something like mist or breath. And he's confused what's transitory and insubstantial for the real thing. He's missed the point of life. The thing is, that farmer that Jesus spoke about 2,000 years ago is very much a man for our own times because he is the supreme individualist, totally isolated from others. I think many of us feel sad when we see our young people just playing games on their own without any interaction with friends at all. The farmer was a bit like that. He's praying when in fact all he's doing is talking to himself. His prayer is a monologue, and he doesn't even try to listen to the voice of God. And no other character at all appears in this parable. He's alone. He thinks only of himself. There's no mention or thought of family or friends or the wider community. No other person enters into his solitary world. He has only self-love, which, when it stands alone like that, really is the very opposite, the very antithesis of authentic love. And this is his life. And I think even for the, the most atheistic materialist, this doesn't sound like a very happy life. It may sound like a safe and a secure life, insofar as a person can control such things, but almost one might say it's a non-life because it's devoid of any of the genuine or lasting joys and blessings that come to us in life from community, from love, from friendship, from intimacy with others and with God. And the farmer really is a fool because he squandered the most fundamental gift of God, life itself. He's sold himself short. He's impoverished himself. He's given himself over to what St Paul calls, in that second reading, the idolatry of greed, which is the worship of self. Idolatry can perhaps seem an odd concept to us these days, something from ancient history, the worship of idols. But it's such a persistent and serious problem that, of course, it heads the list of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. And for us, greed is possibly the most prevalent form of idolatry in our time. When much of the world goes hungry while the richer nations stockpile their wealth just like the farmer did. That radio advertisement is right. It is difficult to concentrate on two things at once. But it's impossible, as Jesus tells us, to serve both God and wealth. We can't commit our lives to God and then hedge our bets on the altar of materialism. We can't listen to the voice of God and the voice of selfishness at the same time. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, says the psalm. To his voice. He is the one we are to kneel to and no other. Today's readings are a challenge to us about very fundamental things. We need to ask ourselves, what is my life all about? What is the most important thing in my life? It might be a useful exercise as we're traveling home perhaps to think what we would list as the three most important things in our life. Where does our security lie? What is my attitude to money and to possessions? What thought do I give to my neighbour? Which voice do I listen to? Who or what is really my God?
so we make together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> Dear God, help remind us that our ultimate joy does not lie in an accumulation of wealth and material goods, but in a true, happy and loving heart. Hear the prayers we bring before you. We pray for Pope Francis as he reminds us that our descendants are a great gift. Let us give thanks to our parents and grandparents who helped us feel welcome in the world and who love us unconditionally without expecting anything back. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine, who have been under constant attack since February. We pray for families and businesses that are doing their best to keep the country running. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for sporting heroes, particularly the women's England football team and competitors in the Commonwealth Games, that inspire us with their dedication, hard work and passion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for families and students that are enjoying the summer break. May they return to their work and studies feeling refreshed, well rested, having created special moments. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for households that are struggling financially. May they receive the support they need and seek help from family, friends, and loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those facing difficult relationships, be that personal or professional. May they seek the good grace they need to rise above communication challenges and work towards more harmonious interactions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We unite our prayers with our Blessed Lady as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In a moment of silence, we bring our own personal prayers before the Lord. Lord Jesus, may we always remember that our true happiness lies in you alone. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be Lord the bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, which will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be Lord forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effect of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also your servant, Gordon, whom you called from this world to yourself, from that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, the Spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Michael the Archangel, our Patron, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. And your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only save the world from my soul.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This week's a little bit complicated because Father Brian, our parish priest, is away, and so I'm covering things in Falmouth as well. One of those things is a funeral on Wednesday, which is normally my day off. So I'm taking my day off tomorrow. Um, as a consequence, we can't have our first Monday devotions. Um, so they're moving to Tuesday. So first Monday devotions are happening this week, but they're happening on Tuesday evening. So holy hour here at six o'clock on Tuesday. As it says in the bulletin, people are welcome to drop in for as long or as little a time as they like. Um, Hopefully, that will be followed by uh, coffee and a chat, um, depending on how well um, Mary is. Uh, if not, I'll have to do something about it myself, I'll check with her. But that should certainly be have the chat, even if we don't manage to get a cup of coffee. Um, Mass here, as normal, is on Friday this coming week. It's uh, the feast day of St Mary Major. Please do make sure you've got a copy of the bulletin so you know everything that's happening. Also available are the, uh, in the porch, a copy of the homily, a copy of today's prayers and an alternative set of prayers if you'd like other prayers to use at home. Um, do take any of that with you. If you want to leave the uh, service sheet behind, there's a box behind the pew there for our recycling paper. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday in the month, which means it's Food Bank Sunday. So those who can bring something for the food bank, that would be great. Have oh, I forgotten anything? No? Nobody's shouting or waving at me, that's a good sign. The Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and proclaim the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, be to God. In this parish dedicated to Our Lady, we end with an anthem to Mary. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry for banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, Show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of
Oh, yes, please. So look through it and tell me and I'll order a copy. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Oh, no. I'll, I'll order one for you. Right. Okay. I'm going to come to because I want to try and keep this one. Yes. It's, um, it's different from the usual ones. Right. So, who who will publish it? I'll give it to I, I, I'm always careful. It's... Um, the... If it's written for Fatima, you need to be very, very careful. Um, they're the ones that put in protests and things at the shrine. Yeah. No, I think they're prob that's probably okay. Is yours one? Thank you. Oh, yes. Right. Um, one more question. Um, that's taken from the um, you just need to tell me, I mean, um, and we'll make a date, I mean, you know, either when I'm here, or if you want to come to help them, you know, whichever the easiest for you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, not this week, not a week off this week. Right. Um, so what's the best thing to do? Email you or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to come early Friday morning, good enough. I'll do it then. Yeah, I've got shoe off then. But I'm, I'm coming to Nesco in the morning. Well, come early. I'm not Friday. Come early and we'll do it then. Um, half nine? Half nine. What time is Nesco? Ten o'clock. Half nine. I'll see you then. Okay, okay. that's great. Right.